Good morning. Uh, this is a presentation on parental data, uh, parental health and associated risk factors, the second European population-based cross-sectional uh, study. So this uh, slide is the overview of the data collection. So on the left, that's the chart that we used, and on the right is the questionnaire that we used for the page participants who are taking, uh, part participating in the study. So three clinical periodontal measures will be collected on this research are presented on this slide. So first, percentage of participants maximum BP, percentage of bleeding on probing, and average probing depths at all sites in the cohort of the participating countries on the bottom right. So this is the maximum probing depth per country, showing proportions of participants with whole mass maximum probing depth of one, two, three, four, five, and six plus millimeters. So blue one is on the right, on the left is the one for buccal, and the yellow and red one is for the palatal and lingual data. So this is data for assessing bleeding on probing in those who have no pockets of four millimeters or more by country and by age. So tables for each country each are given with the percentage uh, defined as health with localized gingivitis and with generalized gingivitis. For age, there's a, also a graph. Uh, the variations in the country data shows that the differences between countries are not just to do with the differences in age profile, but probably also reflects the difference in the sources of the cohort. So for example, if participants are recruited from a periodontal clinic. And the highest values in the healthy and generalized gingivitis groups are highlighted in yellow, so Portugal and Italy respectively. In terms of gingival health, association between percentage of bleeding on probing and recession, the first table shows the data for the whole mouth, so health as well as the disease. And the second table shows health versus diseased. So when data is, was dichotomized on lingual surfaces, the percentage participants with any bleeding on probing is significantly possibly associated with the percentage with any lingual recession at P equals one, uh, 0 0.017 and the other surfaces were not significant. And when split by disease status in health, there is, there is a sig significantly negative association between bleeding on probing and the buccal recession at 0 0.008. And in disease, the positive association between lingual recession and the bleeding on probing almost reached significance at 0 0.068. So looking at the questionnaire variables, uh, relationship between BMI, gender, residence, and employment. So males, the overweight, and the unemployed are at increased risk of having probing depth of four millimeters or more. Generalized bleeding on probing, which is more than 30% of the sites, was significantly lower in females, those with optimal BMI, and students, even after the adjustment, ad adjustment for the age. Bleeding on probing uh, at 10% or more was also significantly lower in females, those with optimal BMI and being students. And in the non perio population, males with those with a high BMI and manual workers are most at risk of generalized gingivitis, while being student was associated with gingival health. So next, looking at the relationship with the toothbrushing and the toothbrushing variables. So toothbrushing habits and orthodontic treatments are not associated with probing depth. Uh, uh, there was a, an increased risk of generalized bleeding on probing in less frequent brushes and a decreased, de decreased risk in those who brush for longer or use a power brush. Also, there was a reduced risk of generalized bleeding on probing in those who have orthodontic treatment. And finally, in the non perio population, generalized, generalized gingivitis was significantly associated with brushing often for less times and also with the manual brush use. And for those with gingivitis, there is an increased risk of bleeding on probing in less frequent brushes, which is quite obvious, and there is a de decreased risk in those who brush for longer or use a power brush. There is also a reduced risk of bleeding on probing in those who have orthodontic treatment, and the bleeding on probing is reduced in those who brush after breakfast. 
Uh, next, considering the uh, non perio participants, uh, gingivitis was significantly associated with brushing for less time, use of a manual brush, and brushing before breakfast. And finally, looking at the influence of dominant hand, Buckley probing depth was lower on the dominant side. There was no difference between the outcome for manual and the power brushes. Percentage of bleeding on probing was lower on the dominant side and was more marked in the manual brush group. Looking at the data lingually and palately, uh, percentage of bleeding on probing was worse on the dominant side, but there was no difference between the sides for the probing depths. The, the greater percentage of bleeding on probing on the dominant side was much more marked in the power brushes than the manual ones. So this slide looks at exercise frequency, smoking, use of e-cigarettes, alcohol consumption, and snoring. So for the effect of the exercise frequency, both probing depth and uh, bleeding on probing are reduced by exercise with a slight dose response. This was also true of BOP for non-perio group. And they're looking at the for smokers, probing depth is definitely increased in current smokers and uh, there's a small increase for the ex-smokers. And, and in individuals with a maximum probing depth of three millimeters, current smoking is associated with the bleeding on probing at more than 10% of the sites. And looking at those uh, who use e-cigarettes or those vaping uh, uh, devices, there was a clear increase in probing depth in current users of the e-cigarettes, but not in bleeding on probing, irrespective of whether data was limited to those with a maximum probing depth of three millimeters. And the uh, alcohol for alcohol, bleeding on probing was significantly reduced for those who drink alcohol when restricted uh, to those with a maximum probing depth of three millimeters. This was only true of generalized bleeding on, bleeding on probing. And the uh, pocket pro uh, probing depth was not associated with the alcohol use once co confounders were taken into account. And finally, for those who snore, snoring was, not, was associated with, in with increased pocket depth, and this was only a trend, as well as bleeding on probing. And when BMI was taken into account, the association with the generalized bleeding on probing is lost, but with localized ble bleeding on probing, it is retained. And the association with the pocket depth is retained as well. And finally, in participants with a probing depth of three millimeters or less, there was no association with bleeding on probing before or after adjustment for the BMI. And this is an analysis for all the participants. So this data shows the percentage of uh, people who self-reported perio disease and use home treatments for, for it or had access to, uh, to professional help for it. So 49.8, nearly 50% of the participants who self-reported gum bleeding said they had, used, they had used home treatments. There was little gender or age difference in home treatment use. The mean percentage bleeding on probing was not much higher in the group that reported using home treatments for perio than in the, no other, in the group who answered no, although the difference was just significant. 54.1% of the participants who self-reported gum bleeding said they had had a professional help. Again, there was little gender difference. Uh, the mean age of those answering yes and no differed significantly for this uh, question and the mean percentage of the bleeding bleeding on probing was not much higher in the group that reported receiving professional help for the perio than in the group who answered no and the difference did not reach significance also now looking at the self-reported data so self-reported gum disease versus clinical bleeding on probing so this data compares clinically determined bleeding on probing with a self-reported gum bleeding and there are graphs of how these compare over the different age groups. Also uh, has the comparison between the self-reported recession and the maximum probing depth. So where there are statements about separation, I believe it means that the yes group uh, associates with a higher means of percentage of bleeding on probing or maximum probing, at, uh, probing depth values. And finally, uh, self-reported wobbly teeth versus clinical probing depth. This Gives the, this data gives the self-reported wobbly teeth uh, in male versus female, age, and so on. So this also gives association with the 
probing depth where there are statements about separation, I believe it means that the yes group associates with a higher maximum probing depth values. So to conclude, uh, this is a summary of the data set of 3,551 European adults in seven different countries, which explored gingival health and disease. And when split by disease status, in health, there is a significant neg negative association between bleeding on probing and buccal recession. In disease, a positive association between lingual recession and the bleeding on probing almost reaches significance. Male, the overweight, and the unemployed are at increased risk of having probing depth of four millimeters or more. There was an increased risk of generalized bleeding on probing in less frequent brushes and a decreased risk in those who brush for longer or use a power brush. Probing depth is increased in current smokers with a small increase in ex-smokers. The mean percentage of bleeding on probing was twice as high in the self-reported uh, yes gum bleeding groups in, uh, in, than in the no groups. And that this was uh, uh, statistically significant. And there was a significant association between maximum probing depth and the self-reported recession, but it was less strong than in the association between self-reported recession and the maximum recession. Thank you.